All right, there you go. And you dropped a bomb. Not a torpedo, but close enough. Oh. Wow, Jay Killen. <laughs> that was probably one of the saddest things I have ever seen. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Recreating the Disasters, and today we're focusing on the Windsor Castle. See ya guys? Let's get into the video. And as always, Jay Killen, do you want to give us some background as to what the Windsor Castle was? Yeah, the Windsor Castle was originally designed in 1913 for the Union Castle Line, planned to be built in the Harland and Wolf shipyards. As a result of World War I beginning in 1914, construction was delayed. The Windsor Castle, along with the sister ship, the Arundel Castle, would eventually be launched on March 9, 1921, and construction finished in 1922 at the John Brown and Company shipyard. One interesting safety feature on board was the two large gantry davits near the aft end of the ship. These are similar to the ones that were used on the HMHS Britannic. Both ships became the flagship of the Union Castle Line with a top speed of 18 knots and capacity for 234 first, 362 second, and 274 third class passengers. The Windsor Castle's first voyage was in April of 1922 from Southampton to Cape Town, South Africa. However, in 1937, both ships had major refits which saw alterations to the bow, the removal of two of her funnels and a change to the remaining two, an addition of new boilers along with the removal of her gantry davits. This left the ship looking significantly different. Unfortunately, in game, at least for now, the ship is stuck in the original configuration. But with the ship option setting, I think you can actually remove two of the funnels to make it a bit more accurate. Yeah, you actually can, and I've actually removed two of the funnels, and it sort of looks like how the ship did when it eventually did sink. In World War II, the Windsor Castle along with the Arundel Castle were requisitioned as a troop ship, which brings us up to where we are currently. All right, so thank you very much, Jay Killen, and as you can see, the ship is in the gray livery, so the troop ship livery. So let's go ahead and let's get going. Now, speaking about setting sail, where are we going, Jake Killen? The ship was carrying troops from Greenock to the Mediterranean in March of 1943 before she would be sunk. So yeah, that's what we're doing right now. We're sailing out into the Mediterranean, and apparently we've got this nasty thunderstorm going on, and we are rocking around like crazy. Look at that. I'm pretty sure the troops, or well, anybody on board, is not experiencing a very good voyage right now. They're probably pretty seasick, and there's probably a lot of stuff flying around inside of the ship, which is, of course, not good. There's definitely gonna be a couple messes to clean up after this, but we will continue on. Now, Jake Hill, and I've got a question, and I've been wondering this ever since we started researching this for this video. Why did they remove the gantry davits? I believe they were removed as a result of improving her appearance by replacing them with the traditional Welland Evans to appear more uniform. These Davids would actually be the same type that were used in the Olympic class. So yeah, that's really interesting, and it does make sense. With them gone, it will make the ship look a little bit more uniform. Alright, so as you can see, the sun is setting, and in a couple of hours, we will near the time when the disaster would actually occur. So Jake Killen, what actually happened? Yeah, so German aircraft would actually locate her approximately 110 miles northwest of Algiers on March 23rd. At around 2.35 a.m., a plane launched torpedo would strike the Windsor Castle's aft, causing crew on board to be abruptly awoken from the sound of the torpedo's detonation, and everyone began to quickly organize an evacuation. Now, this explosion actually stopped the engines, at least according to testimony from one of the survivors, and it's a really interesting read, so I'll leave a link down below if you want to check that out. So we'll go ahead and stop the ship here, and that's it. The Windsor Castle is beginning to sink, and we're about to see the actual uh, torpedo hit the ship in just a minute. And I think Jay Killen is just around the corner, ready to drop one. All right, there you go, and you dropped a bomb. Not a torpedo, but close enough. Oh! Wow, Jay Killen. <laughs> that was probably one of the saddest things I have ever seen. You were just I forgot I flying. was throttled down. And then you stopped flying, and you immediately fell out of the sky. It's like a cartoon. Anyways, the ship is now taking on water, but this would not be a very quick sinking. And Jay Killen, do you want to tell us how long the sinking really was? Yeah, so the sinking lasted for a little less than 13 hours, or approximately 12 hours and 50 minutes, which is just insane, to be honest. Considering how old the ship was, and the time period it was built in, that's impressive, though. Yeah, and you have to think the design was actually older than the era it was constructed in. It was designed in 1913 and then built in the 1920s. That's not too far apart, but that's a, a couple of years, so designs could have changed and whatnot, safety features could have been added, I'm not sure. But the ship really held strong in this situation. So only one torpedo hit the ship, and there was a fatality, 
but I'm not sure if the fatality was a direct involvement of the torpedo or if it was a cause of the sinking afterward. But unfortunately, someone did pass away. And who was that? Yeah, so unfortunately, Junior Engineer W.O. Mann would become the only casualty. And I'm not sure if it's because of the torpedo impact or something from the sinking itself, but yeah. So yeah, it is a tragedy that that one individual did die, but what happened after? Were there rescue ships? Yeah, after the impact, men quickly dropped to the floor grabbing their boots and life belts, and panic ensued, but the evacuation was orderly. Lifeboats would be prepared and launched, and other destroyers and ships would arrive at the scene to aid in the rescue to take on the rest of the crew still remaining on the ship. And amazingly enough, there is a photo sequence of the ship going down with the destroyers around, and you can see the bow just rise out of the water, and it plunge under. So I'll show some of those on screen now, but they are super impressive because you rarely get to see photos like this, at least in a sort of organized fashion where it's one photo after the next from almost the same angle. So now that we've actually seen the real photo sequence of the ship going down, let's recreate it. All right, so the ship is now going down. You can see it's going down by the stern. Now in real life, of course, it had that list over to starboard, but it doesn't look like we're gonna see that in the game. But that's okay. As you can see, the ship is going down. We've got lifeboats leaving the ship. That's good, of course. And now we've got water starting to flood over the back, or we're about to see it here in just a moment. Yep, there we go. We got water on the stern. It is going down. The bow is coming out of the water. Yep, here we go. It is about to go right to the bottom. And let's go ahead. Let's jump off here. And let's see if we can recreate that photo. There it goes. And it's gone. Now, it didn't actually go vertical completely. It did hit the bottom. But in real life, it did go vertical and it just dropped under. So there it is. There is the Windsor Castle as a wreck on the bottom. Now, of course, Jake Killen, we talked about the one fatality, but how many people were actually on board the ship? Yeah, so in regards to survivors, 290 crew and 2,699 servicemen on board would be rescued. So that's really impressive. There were a lot of people on the ship and one fatality. That's not bad for a ship being torpedoed. But I think that's all thanks to the slow sinking time. But once again, this was still a tragedy, there was a life lost, and that is something that has to be remembered when you think about the Windsor Castle, because even though it was miraculous that almost everybody got off, there was still that one fatality. But anyways, there it is, that was the sinking of the Windsor Castle. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you all next time guys, goodbye.